There's an art to fitting a sale horse. So I've come to two of the best in our business, Justin Cunningham from Weatherford, Texas, and Melody Smith from Whitesboro. Welcome. Justin, I'll start with you. How many horses would you fit every year? I think the numbers last year were like 175. And they're all yearlings? Yes, sir. A couple broodmares. Right. And Mel, how many would you guys fit here at Solo Silly? Well, we'll sell close to a thousand a year, but we will probably fit from start to finish maybe a hundred a year. A lot of them come to us ready. You know, we'll sell them fit and ready. When would you advise owners to send a horse? I would like, you would like them preferably. You can do a ton in 45 days, but you know, to really do a great job, I think you need 60 to I mean, 120 is a really long time, I feel, but 90 days would be ideal. A horse turns up, Mel, to your place, mm -hmm. and let's say the sale is in um, 50 days. Mm -hmm. What's the first, the first week of, of their schedule, I guess? We would, um, it, it, let's just say you get one that is a little long-haired out of the pasture, okay, and we want to sell it in 50 days. We would start with uh, the day they get here, I say power pack, but when we tube them with EPM medicine, it actually has wormer in it. So um, a lot of times if, if that looks like it's going to go ahead and make them start turning loose of their hair and all that, that's all we'll do. And then if we feel like that we need additional wormings, then we will run that full power pack through them. Um, but we will uh, we'll do that and we will transition them from grass hay to alfalfa over a couple of days usually. They usually take that pretty good. It's the grain that you can get in a bind on that if you just throw it to them, sometimes they'll tie up or they just call, you know, whatever it may be. So we will get them on that alfalfa first and start adding that grain and um, bathe them in hot water is a good way to start getting their coats laid down. When you put that, uh, the blanket and slinky on them, that starts encouraging that hair to come off, you know, when they have that. So we put them, we have a, a pretty strict protocol. What hemp do you normally start to look at putting slinkies or sheets and those things on? So the winter months are different to me, it, you know, or when it comes into summer going into cool, it's not as, the, as frigid to me. You know, you have to be real careful. So I try around 60, mm -hmm. I start putting slinkies on. But, and then it just depends on how tight your barn is. Like my barn isn't as tight as this barn. Yeah. So then you put your slinkies on at a little different. And then once they're really on. What about um, the slinky, if, if it's a full body and can it just rub the mane out? The biggest thing is making sure you have one that's big enough. Like yeah. if you put, and, and slinkies like, I feel like if you're not used to sizing them, you want to order a medium for your quarter horse and it's going to be too small probably. Right. Like. We would almost always use larges and extra larges too, and also making sure that your if your horse to me like when they're just standing there, if that neck part is tight on their mane just standing there, that slinky's too small. Yeah. Like it should be a little loose, so that way when they put their head down, it is maybe tight-ish, you know. But um, if they're just standing there like this and it's clean to the top of their mane, it's gonna rub some of their mane out. It's too small. Yeah. So. What is the secret to a nice producing a very thick and healthy? mane and tail. I think contrary to popular belief, people thinking the less you brush them or t maintain them or take care of them, or you know, you just leave them alone, which I don't, like I feel like you're going to pull less out if you- When I say your tail is up, we braid it, have a little deal where we loop it through itself and wrap it. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty clean when we take it out of that, but we still will do it once a week. So we pull all that out. Uh, shampoo and condition it with warm water, let it completely dry, like it has to be completely dry, no, not wet at all, and then we'll go through and braid their mane, and when you do their mane, you have to make sure that it's not too tight at the top or they're gonna rip it out. It's a little like that um, slinky, like if they're just standing there, like. And Justin, you and your father, uh, Bob, have a very good reputation in the thorough, thoroughbred business, so you would have learned a lot of this from, from I guess, yeah. pin hooking and also just prepping horses yeah, in the sir. thoroughbred business? Yeah, because I helped him, we helped, fit yearlings to go to the sales in Keeneland and stuff. So well. a different discipline, but the same common denominators for fitting a horse, do you think? A thoroughbred yeah, um, but just, Keeneland versus... Yeah, to, to me, I guess it would just be about the amount of feed, like your concentrated feed per, like the, those horses need more in general because they just burn it up so fast to me. 
but it's just your exercise, what you decide on your exercise program. Well, and I think the round pen's a little like how he says that they walk the thoroughbred so that they have probably confidence in their steps and mm -hmm. they know kind of about, that sounds funny, but walking in a straight line mm -hmm. when people want to view them, no different than the round pen. Like when we would go to Justin's to look at yearlings, we want to see them in the round pen. We don't want to see them on the walker. We don't get a whole lot out of seeing them in a stall. We want to see them in the round pen. So they, it's a process for those colts to learn to travel in the round yeah. pen. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's a lot of horses, in my opinion, at, at those sales that don't probably bring what they should have because people that don't understand how to work a yearling in the round pen have been working them. So A, they don't know about taking their leads both ways. You know, they don't travel good around there. They're a little scared going in there because they, you know. The so let's get on to the very, debatable topic of nutrition and mm -hmm. diet because mm -hmm. I'm sure you know this is everyone's got a, an own personal opinion what do you like to do for your yearlings well um, we do our alfalfa which I honestly think the alfalfa is probably the single most important thing like we can grain all we want and there's a lot of different grain that I think is equally as strong between brands I think that there's a lot of good products but the bottom line is if you have bad alfalfa your horses aren't gonna look good so in my opinion, it starts with the alfalfa, getting good, leafy, horse quality alfalfa. And, and that's hard to find right now. And it's double hard to afford because it's high, you know. So if you cheat on the alfalfa, it's, I mean, I don't know what Justin thinks of this, but I think if you cheat on the alfalfa, your grain isn't going to make that big right. of a difference. If you have good alfalfa, that's when your grain is going to come in and make the extra difference that's going to give you that up. Um, you know, we we would I would say count on our alfalfa more than our grain, but Justin does a lot more like chemist work with his grain and his supplements and all that than we do. We we rely more on my house at our alfalfa. Sure. So just different ways of doing it. Yeah. So Justin, just uh, yeah, let us know about your your chemistry. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> the alfalfa like start. I mean, that's an, number one, and then they they need it. I try to keep something in front of them all day long, unless they're just.